Beneath Australia's tropical waters lurks a creature known to be the most venomous on Earth. Its sting causes agonizing pain and death. I had incredible cramps, shifting all around my back, my stomach. I couldn't get comfortable. I was in intense pain. I did stop breathing several times. It was just easier not to try and breathe. A lot of tremendous pain, yeah, agonizing pain. I certainly felt as though I didn't want to live. <laughs> Ben Crop searches a mangrove creek in August. He's looking for an important early stage in the life cycle of this deadly creature. Aha, this looks like a good rock. It's very possible that there's polyps uh, adhering to this, but no way can I see it with the naked eye, so I'll have to take it back to the lab for Jamie to look at under the microscope. Dr. Jamie Seymour of James Cook University is intensively studying the little-known behaviour and life cycle of the creature. Jamie sees the sedentary polyp stage affixed to the rock. It reproduces itself asexually by budding off additional creeping polyps. A single stinging cell kills planktonic prey. After months of feeding and budding, the polyp begins its metamorphosis, the complete transformation of its body into a swimming stage. It's now a jellyfish medusa, struggling to break loose from the bottom and swim away. It slowly changes shape to a minute box jellyfish. The birth of Coronex fleckeri the world's deadliest creature. We seem to surmise so much, you know, to fill in all these gaps that, uh, the, that we don't know about the behaviour, even, even where they uh, go to spawn. I mean, I've always surmised that they come into the mouths of the rivers, but uh, maybe not. Whether or not they swim up the, up the creeks and spawn, whether they actually spawn out at sea, who knows? We do know that the juvenile box jellyfish feed and grow and proliferate in the mangrove nursery, awaiting their time to leave, ultimately destined to become a threat to man. Lots and lots of box jellyfish here. They're all moving out of the estuary, past my wharf here, around the point, and by tomorrow, they'll be all around on Four Mile Beach. This is the last week of November, so they're spot on time, because this is a normal time that they leave the estuary and head around to the beach, and that's where they'll find enough food, and they'll grow big and fat and dangerous. Invisible killers invade our beautiful northern beaches. Nice size. If there's one, there's always a second or third one. Well, juvenile quadrigatus. Now, only yesterday we saw all those box jellyfish coming out of the estuary. Well, they're here now. They only took one day to swim out here about five nautical miles. And there's hundreds and hundreds of them, literally. It's amazing just how many. Every few meters, there's another box jellyfish swimming along, feeding. But fortunately for the swimmers here in Port Douglas, this quadrigatus is not deadly like, like the fleckeri. I mean, it won't kill you, it won't even put you in hospital. It'll sting and hurt, and it'll only grow about twice this size, which isn't too bad. Ben's dog, Tuffy, is too hairy to be stung. Sometimes the shadow is clearer than the creature. Bathers cannot see the jellyfish, but they will feel it like an electric shock. Wow, here's a lot. Oh, there's a whole group. Oh! Oh! Look at that. 
I think my hand's a little bit tough and it doesn't hurt so, so much. But what I've got to be very careful of, you know, when I've got these tentacles on my fingers, that I don't go and touch my face, touch my nose or, or ears or mouth, because then I'll, I'll really scream, they'll really hurt. But my, my hands are pretty sort of um, uh, used to getting stung like that. Now this guy, Quadrigatus, it certainly could give you a lot of a lot of pain, especially a child or a woman, because most women wading uh, along here would have shaved their legs and that bare skin, it's very easy for those tentacles to, uh, to adhere uh, to the skin and pump the, all those nematocysts with the poison into the skin. Ah, uh, Tuffy, look at that, all oh, right in front of your nose. Look at it, Tuff. Now, Tuffy's a pretty hairy sort of dog, but his nose is vulnerable to this. And if that thing had touched you on the nose, you would have yelped. All right, one last thing to do is to get this vinegar, pour it all over my hand and my fingers where I, I got stung, and that'll just stop any unfired nematocysts uh, on any tentacles that may be there, you know, stinging me again. Very, very good idea to leave this vinegar on the beach here so that, uh, just in case you do get stung. Most popular beaches have a stinger net. The large box jellyfish can't get through. Inside the stinger net, a protective lycra suit is a must. For this big, adult Coronex Fleckeri will kill. Now that, that is big enough to kill a human. Very, very easy. That's almost full adult size. Very, very dangerous. Box jellyfish kill more people in the tropical north than crocodiles and sharks combined. More than 80 victims have died. Gambling with their lives, some people still chance a swim. On contact, each tentacle fires millions of poisonous darts, called nematocysts, into the skin. The shock and pain is intense. That's where you hit, Jodie. Believe it or not, actually, in this area. Um, right here? Yeah, right here. And I was chasing my dog, and yeah, so right here was where it happened. I walked into him. You must have hurt a terrible lot. Yeah, a lot of tremendous pain, uh, agonizing pain. I uh, thought it was sea lice at first, yeah. but uh, then my boyfriend grabbed me and lifted me up, and out of the water, all the tentacles came, and... Yeah, it was a pretty big Did they one. rush to the hospital? Within minutes, the ambulance was here. And, and what about anti-venom? Uh, they gave me the anti-venom in uh, my thighs. Any scarring? A little bit. Yeah. yeah, not too much. So I'm very lucky compared yeah. to what I got hit with. Well, Jody, I guess the big question is, do you still go back in the water? Uh, no. I've actually... I come down the beach a lot, but no, no swimming at all. Locals turn to the safety of freshwater pools in the hot summer months. 